So, first things first, Vincent, how are you? All right, yeah, all right. Okay, good to hear. So, I kind of want to dive, we've talked before, so I want to dive straight into the album, if that's okay. Okay, yeah. The album's called The Optimist. Mm. At what point was it called The Optimist? Because there is a, a reference to an earlier album. Yeah, we, we had the song first, mm -hmm. The Optimist. That was the first one that came together during the, the writing and pre-production process. So that was first, and it was a couple of months after that. Okay. So, the, so it wasn't uh, on a, a fine day to exit that there was mm -hmm. already an idea of The Optimist? No. We, um, I think quite early on, like shortly after The Optimist song was written, mm -hmm. we were like, okay, this should be the title for the title track. It just felt like the title track. But then the whole story and everything else that went along with it, the, the songs that we included and the running order and the story, the visuals, all that side of it, that came later, a couple of months later. That was Danny. But, but so that first track, uh, the, 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 the Optimist that track, when, when was it born? When was... Um, well, I think the seed of it's been around for a little while. Danny, ha Danny had a, a strange recording of it. It sounded like he'd... Do you remember like people used to record things on tapes? Sure, sure. And it sounded like the tape, like it, it just walked when it got wet mm. and it was all mangled and garbled. And it, it, I don't know how it happened, but it just sounded brilliant. And there was, but there wasn't much to it. It was really only a couple of chords, but it was enough to spark the rest of the song. Um, so I, I was, I, I moved to London where he was living. Mm. And uh, we rented this room and I put my studio gear in there. And once it was set up, I said, I gave Danny Cole, said, come round. And that was the first song we started to work on. Um, so we did the, I think we, we did the first, like the first half of it, sort of. And he already had the lyrics. Okay. And then he kind of improvised the, the middle part. And um, then we put, to, put that together. And we thought it was finished. Okay. This is the story with this song. And then a couple of months later, we're out on tour. We'd, we did like a, a pre-album tour to test out the, right. the new stuff. And that song, there was, it wasn't getting the reaction we'd hoped. And it was one of them was, is this song, does this song need an ending? So Danny, had basically through necessity of playing it live, mm. kind of wrote a new riff to go on the end, wrote the ending on the tour bus one day. Uh, on the back of the bus, and um, then we recorded, and it became one of the best moments on the album. So, because I, I, I remember our talk about the previous record, This is Satellite, and then where you mentioned that certain songs they come together kind of like happy accidents. I don't, I don't yeah, like there's a few of those on this. Yeah, there's it was quite different to okay. Distant Satellites, the process of writing it and recording, especially writing because. Like I said, for this one, we wanted to be more prepared. So the idea was to rent this studio okay. uh, and just go for a couple of months with no distractions of concerts. We only played like two gigs last year right. uh, up until the tour. So we were like deliberately staying in the studio to concentrate on writing. Right. So there's me and Danny in London doing that like every day. And then John would come down from Liverpool and join us and, and we'd work on his stuff as well. So. Uh, it was a, a more collaborative process between the three of us. And um, so Danny would like, it, it would be a, a mixture. Like, so sometimes Danny would have something that would be more complete and more ready. Um, and sometimes he'd just, he'd just come in one day and have the vocal. Okay, mm -hmm. this one's ready. And we'd record it and then we'd, you know, go and watch Mr. Robot or something, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and John's stuff was, a lot of John's stuff have been floating around for a little while, so he comes to, like, a lot of his stuff's written on guitar. Mm -hmm. um, so we come in with, like, a basic guitar demo, usually with, recorded at home, just in his front room. Okay. Um, with, uh, you know, the budgery guy, <laughs> like, kind of shouting in the background. And then, and then we'll, we'll make sense of that, and me and him will kind of put mm -hmm. that together. And it's a similar thing with Danny. With Danny, though, it's a little bit more, um, there was some... Moments of impro improvisation. Okay. Um, song San Francisco came out of an idea that Danny had. Uh, he wanted to create a track like that, like the kind of aesthetic of that track, that mm -hmm. constant forward motion kind of thing. 
And it was so it was an idea, okay, let's put a delay on the piano, let's just try something. Right. So we tried a bunch of things and then we kind of left it. But I noticed it had like a a loop, like this few bars that okay, if I if I do this and move this and sort that and then use that as the basis for it, we've got something. It was a similar thing with um ghosts. Okay. Where I think one day Danny was just on the guitar, he was like he was just noodling really he wasn't I think we were setting up to okay. record um, he was going to record something else but we were just setting up it's like sound checking right and he was just noodling la 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 you know I said what's that I'm okay I just pressed record and he'd forgotten about it and then um, a few weeks later I remembered it and basically did a demo out of it you know with piano drums and mm. stuff sure strings and that and um, played to him and said you know that's that's that riff <laughs> So there was that, that kind of collaboration on this record, which was really cool. I think that whole period, especially for Danny and for me, uh, that whole period of last year, um, from about April, May to September, was a really boss period for us. Yeah. We loved it, like just having that studio, having somewhere to go. Continuity <laughs> errors there. People are going to go, oh, what's going on there? He's a wizard. <laughs> So, but you, ma you mentioned this, uh, that it was a really strong period for you and, then, and, and that you were a little bit more deliberate in, in kind of setting out some time and going into the studio to write this yeah. satellite. So, so how come? Was this a, a reaction to how this satellite kind sort of Sort of. I mean, partly. But also that we just didn't want to do any gigs. So we, uh, like, okay. we really, it was time for us to, it was time for us to write anyway. Ooh. And going on tour all the time is like, I mean, you can always go on tour, but it's right. sometimes it's like a massive distraction if you want to just focus on writing, you know. And um, it paid off. It's, it really paid off. And see, those moments as well, you've got to understand that being in a band is like, it's a lot of work, but it's, it's got to be fun, right? Sure, sure. You've got to go away, like, with memories, you know, with good memories, and that's a great memory that we'll have mm. of those few months in that studio. I want to do it again, you know, maybe not that studio, maybe somewhere else, you know, but it's, you can't, I can't beat that. I think, like, that's where we get the most pleasure out of right. this whole thing that we're doing. That and gigs, you know, certain gigs, but especially, like, writing, you know, when there's just a couple of us there and we're just sparking off ideas, you know, there's nothing better than that. But in hindsight, then, what made this particular sessions is so so fruitful so, so no, enjoyable it's probably because we were just more open okay just as people we were kind of as brothers we were more open you know <laughs> is, is there a, because well obviously you've been in band all a, a long time so is there a strain that happens in a way a what a strain of, of sorts on the, on no the I mean relation? what you got to remember is that this isn't a business for us or a sure. a band sort of venture or a career or anything like that we're brothers like so what you have to remember is like that we're a family first and a band second. So if if the family side of it's okay, then the band's okay. Mm. But that has to come first. Right. And that was, I guess, like one, me moving to because I'd lived abroad for like years. Right. I'd li li lived away for like seven years or something, like eight years. So the only time that I would see Danny is like on tour. Mm. And then you kind of get into this rhythm of just seeing each other when you've got a band thing to do. Right. You don't see each other socially very much. And that, you know, we were still, we were always very close during that period, but it was like, when I moved to London, that's when it, it, it kind of came together for us too, as, as brothers as well. So I think that helped okay. before, like to see each other socially and then say, okay, well, you know, I've just got this room, you know, do you want to just come and jam some stuff out? Like, you know. Well, yeah, I find that. it interesting then because uh, you say you were in, gr in great spirits in the studio, so, so mm. but obviously the subject matter of the, of the album mm. isn't the happiest. Mm. So, so how does the, how does that balance itself out when you're in the studio? You can still you can still have a good time, ex like writing music like that. Okay. Is it, is that a difficult thing to do, or is, is that something you've gotten used to? No, or? what's difficult is going through the process of what's forced you into writing something All like right. that, that's difficult. Okay. But that's just life, mm. you know. But do, like getting together with your mates and creating something good out of it, okay. you know, that's something else. We had the studio a couple of months 
We've got a few, a few of John's song together, a few of Danny's. So we had like a more of a broader picture. Yeah. And I had to go to, uh, well, had to, like I was lucky enough to go to Brazil yeah. to play over there, just like a solo okay. acoustic couple of gigs and uh, have a little holiday. And when I got back, Danny had kind of had this, this idea of yeah. the, the whole album running order and the, the track list and all of that. And at the same time, he had the idea for the story. Okay. So, so John and I were in the studio one day. Danny comes in and says, all right, lads, um, don't say anything, but I'm gonna, I want to play the, the running order that I've come up with. And after that, I'm going to tell you about this story. And don't say anything until after I've finished. And then, because he was probably a bit protective that we were going to sure. kind of shoot it down, you know, before. But, so we, we, did, we listened to it and he told us the story. And we said, yeah, we love it. We totally love it. It's a dead good idea. But the only thing is, like, there'll be changes. So we, we substituted a couple of songs and we jiggled the track, track list around a little bit. But apart from that, it was like, it was, it was a goer straight away. Really good story. And, and this narrative, and, and I've read about this, is that you've said that it's open to interpre uh, interpretation. So it, mm. within the band uh, as well, does everybody has, uh, have a different interpretation of what that narrative yeah, is? Yeah, possibly, yeah. I mean, John said something interesting. John said it could, it could be just, you know, almost like it's his life flashing before his eyes. Mm. This whole thing was just imagined at the end of his life. But... I don't really see it like that. <laughs> so I'm not, not going to ask you how, how you see it, because I, I think that's, you'll rather keep that to yourself. But. Yeah, but I think what's interesting about it is the whole thing come, came from the artwork of a Find A2X. Right. You know, but, uh, is the, the artwork of a Find A2X is really, really good, and it tells the story of the, about this, um, this human being as having some kind of breakdown as like a breakdown in his relationships and his mm -hmm. family and his whole life and it's led him to that that decision of to to start again to fake his own death that's why it's called a finally to exit so the cover is from the seat of a car looking out onto a beach the clothes on the beach it's that classic thing of, mm. you know when somebody's disappeared um, so the beginning of this album starts with the beach scene it's not a song it's a it's a, like a, a scene. So from the, from the get-go, was there a, a visual element to everything? Yeah. Okay. So especially from when Danny came up with this story, mm -hmm. it, it all fit naturally after that. Everything mm -hmm. flowed perfectly. The, the, especially, bizarrely enough, especially the, the songs that we had mm -hmm. already. Well, we didn't have to rewrite anything or anything like that. The music all fit already okay. into this kind of theme. And why, why do you think that is? If, if you Dude, there's only one song that we actually we wrote to propel okay. the story forward. That was San Francisco, okay. the instrumental piece, because of this this feeling of driving th at night through mm -hmm. San Francisco. The whole thing set is uh, is takes place on the west coast of America. So it's um, west, you know, San Diego through you know past Los Angeles through mm -hmm. through the wilds there and into. San Francisco and further north into the middle of nowhere and it's all like it's all set on that west coast over a period of time 